Hello VC. So my last video took like eight hours to upload, so uh, I learned some lesson there. Um, I live on a countryside and uh, well basically we're lucky to have a DSL uplink here at all. So it's not very powerful and um, well I need to keep my videos a little more tight. So I just kept the records I've been listening the last three days aside uh, before putting them back to the shelf. So let me just go through that quickly. What Me Worry by Yukihiro Takahashi. Now uh, I really like Yukihiro Takahashi's records. He's of course the, the singer and the percussionist, the drummer of the Yellow Magic Orchestra. But um, he made some really really nice uh, solo records. He's not a He's not a very expressive singer, you wouldn't say that, but he can be very soulful at certain moments. And um, I've always uh, enjoyed uh, a certain coolness in his music. Now I can show you the label of this record. It's of course an alpha record and uh, as such it's probably um, printed in the Netherlands because back in the oh this is actually a German print but most of uh, most of the Alpha Alpha Records vinyls I do have are all printed in Netherlands so this is what the sleeve looks like with lyrics of course you can find a lot of the usual suspects on these records like Ryuichi Sakamoto and Harry Hosono it's a very nice record Okay, next one, Animal Logic. Now that is, uh, <laughs> this is the band of Deborah Holland, which she recorded with Stuart Copeland on drums and Stanley Clark on bass. And um, this is, uh, this came out in 1989. Here is a backside with a nice photo of the three of them. Now, as you can expect, these people know what they're doing. So uh, this is a very uh, sort of a high-end pop music, um, but as such, it's sometimes a little bit, um, well, how shall I put it? I always thought it's a typical record of the 90s, but actually it's, it came out in 89 um, on Virgin, with this modern Virgin logo here. Um, yeah, I listen to it like every five or six years. It's not that exciting to be, to be honest. It's a very clean, it's a very clean, perfectly organized pop music, as you would expect from such musical luminaries. But uh, not all that great. <laughs> so the other record I heard yesterday was uh, Blue Mink and their debut album Melting Pot. Now this is a British five-piece that recorded this record I think uh, in the late 1969 although it came into the stores like January 97 so technically it's a 70s record but this is the rear side but it sounds it's a very it's a very authentic very typical sound of the 60s and it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful pop rock album from this era and really a nice listen. Large part of this band has actually at the same time played on uh, Elton John's debut album. Um, so uh, it's a Philips recording. And uh, yeah, I liked it. Now this one I really enjoyed. Tattoo Man by Denise McCann. Now that is a kind of interesting <laughs> album. This is her debut album and with a really naughty picture work on it. And um, well there seems to be a little story behind it. So so there was this Denise McCann recording her first record in a studio with a band and why and it was supposed to be a sort of a 
country rock uh, uh, 70s album. While they were doing it, something happened outside of the studio, which everybody started to call disco music. So they went into the clubs and listened to it and were totally surprised by it. And uh, were thinking like, now this is the sound of the future. Why are we being in the studio and recording this? Why we should be doing that? But we have this material that we already started to put down. So they went back to the studio and uh, reworked all their material in a sort of a strong disco flavor. And I cannot tell you that it was a bad idea because it sounds fantastic. I really like this album. This is really a, a, a sort of a, a disco record of sorts, but still so strangely rooted in, uh, in sort of a straight proper rock music. Now here is the label, the nice Papillon label. Since it came out on the Butterfly Records. So this is nice. I really like this record. I had it for so many years in my shelf and kind of always ignored it a bit. And this time I thought like, let's pay more attention to it. And I did not regret it at all. Okay, the next one is really a nice experience. I'm talking about Recall the Beginning, A Journey from Eden by Steve Miller Band. Now this is a really nice album and as I read about it, uh, I found out that this was never released on CD. It's sort of a strange phenomena in, uh, in, uh, in Steve Miller's back catalogue that this only exists in this, in this pressing. Uh, which is surprising because this is really good music. Um, well, it's a it's sort of an American blues rock, as you expect from Steve Miller, but uh, it has very nice and very strong uh, sort of psychedelic elements to it. Um, especially the side two, I felt like the side one was really okay. But uh, did I show the back side already? I think I did. I'm doing it twice, I think. But the B-side was really cool, especially the first track, Love's Riddle, on the B-side, and the last one, Journey from Eden, two wonderful, wonderful, sort of psychedelia-rooted tracks. Really liked it. So it's a, it's a gatefold, which looks like that inside. So actually, you kind of have to do that with it. Nice. So it's a record with a nice capital label and it's a, in a wonderful condition I, I bought it like uh, maybe 10 years ago for in England somebody was so nice to give it up so this is a good record but uh, I like most of the stuff by Steve Miller I think this is an amazing artist sometimes even a bit underrated but Certainly not by his fans. And last but not least, um, I was on a flea market and my girlfriend said, can you just pick something? I'd like to hear something Irish. So I was thinking like, well, you cannot predict what will be in the boxes on a flea market. This would be a matter of luck. And um, coincidentally, <laughs> I picked up this double album, um, which at first sight doesn't look like that exciting but it's actually pretty amazing um, this is um, an album from 1977 and uh, it's a double album and a recording of a festival of an Irish musicians festival that took place in Frankfurt Germany and uh, it was actually all recorded and and and, and mixed uh, by Connie Planck, the famous Connie Planck, which is sort of this iconic figure of the German crowd rock movement, but who of, of course had a very prolific studio, the Connie Studio in Neunkirchen. And uh, this is a very good job in terms of a live recording. This has a wonderful sound and atmosphere, but it's also a, like, like, a, like a curation, like a curation of sorts of, of Irish music of that time. And um, it's very, very, it's a very amazing record. 
it's a lot of good music on it. Um, so those are, it is a gatefold with really nice German texts and uh, photographs of sort of this musical scene of Irish folk music of the 70s. If you're an expert, you probably recognize some of these faces. So I was really happy to get that. You know, it took me only like five euro. And uh, now I have to digitalize it for my girlfriend, which is always such a pain. What can you do? So this was my retrospective of what I've listened to the last couple of days. See you, bye bye.